Hi folks, Bob Warfield here. This is the uh, second in our series on uh, CAM for Beginners. Uh, the first one we demonstrated uh, Mesh CAM. Uh, it's a very popular entry-level uh, CAM package. Uh, in this one we're going to demonstrate CAMBAM, with another popular entry-level CAM package. Um, what I'm doing is I'm going through these different packages and I'm showing you how to do the exact same part in each one, just so you can get an idea how they compare. So first thing we need to load our part. In uh, MeshCam we loaded a 3D model and uh, uh, CamBam wants us to start instead from outlines. So I'm going to load a DXF version and the part is, uh, as I mentioned, it's the same one. Uh, it's a carb spacer. Uh, it's a half an inch thick and it's got these green outlines. Uh, one thing that we've got to deal with is we first loaded it and we've got we've got a series of different uh, sort of not connected lines and arcs and we want it all to connect up and so CAMBAM gives us a way to deal with that. I'm gonna mark everything. I'm gonna use edit join to join everything up with a tolerance of a thousandth of an inch. So now I can kinda select my different outlines here and it's it's much easier what's going on. You know the one thing I would say to the author of CAMBAM is I wonder if he's considered just loading everything with that join option by default because I you know I use a lot of different CAM packages and and having an easy way to select the whole outline and not just have to do something like joining is is very convenient and while there are times you might want to access some of the individual features they don't come up very often and you can always unjoin these things if you needed to do that. So I think by way of making it easier for beginners, I think I'd recommend to him that he go ahead and join everything by default. Okay, so let's start by cutting out the big square hole in the middle. And uh, we have a, a, a collection of different uh, machining operations, MOPs uh, is a common term for that, that we can do. Uh, we could profile, which would just run our bit around the inside here, and there'd be a square piece that would drop out. You know, that may work, but uh, typically you, you don't want to do that unless your, your square piece is uh, uh, secured or unless you're just really sure that in, it, in the process of dropping out it is going to snag on the cutter and, you know, possibly jam or get thrown or, you know, even break your cutter. Um, it's generally better to just go ahead and do an operation that converts this whole area into chips and so that's called a pocket. So I'll select a pocket and you see the pockets now been added here uh, to this part as the first machining operation and I've got a set of uh, different you know I think of them as questions they're parameters but they're, they're questions the CAM program has to know to do its part um, in uh, uh, mesh cam we we had a set of these that worked as with the icons here we've got this kind of vertical list and we have these are the basic questions I can go to advanced and get you know a whole bunch more questions so these are your your options to change the behavior of what's going on uh, all right so let's get some of these set I'm gonna go ahead and cut the whole 5 8 inch depth in one shot. So the depth depth increment is 625 and the target depth will also be 625. I'm going to set the same feeds and speeds as what I used in uh, MeshCam just so we got an apples to apples comparison. And uh, by the way as I mentioned in the other video I used uh, GWizard to figure out the feeds and speeds and the step overs and all of that good stuff. Um, I've got to uh, remember to put in the tool diameter. I had forgotten to do that and this is my third take on this because what happens if you don't do that is you generate the tool path and, and there's just nothing there. And uh, there again I wish we had an error message or something to help us out but you know now that I've learned my lesson uh, you know let's put in a quarter of an inch uh, for the tool and then let's go over to advanced and see what else we might need to to fiddle around with. The clearance plane was, we had that in MeshCam too, that's how high do you want to lift the tool uh, as it moves between different areas. Um, let's see here. Just a ton of different options. 
I'm going to go ahead and set my spindle speed. It's, it's not really clear to me why spindle speed is not a basic as opposed to an advanced. I mean, it seems to me you're always going to have to set the spindle speed at the same time you're setting the feed rate. Feeds and speeds is why they use those words, but for some reason this is under advanced, and maybe I just don't know the program well enough to know why. Uh, another one is step over. So this cut is going to look kind of like a spiral that goes out uh, from the middle. And the step over is how much it goes out each time it goes around. Uh, the step over is a fraction of the tool diameter, and we're saying here basically use 40%. I want to use 100% just because that's what I did in the mesh cam example. And uh, I verified in GWizard that that would work and that there wouldn't be too much uh, tool deflection to worry about or that sort of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. Okay, I think that's that's basically all the different uh, options and I do see a nice feature. It it took what things I changed in, in the advanced and it it moved them over into basic so I could still see them here even though I'm back to basic. So that's a cool usability feature. Okay, <clears throat> let's see what it looks like. We go we'll come over here and we hit generate tool paths and it it does give me this warning, and I, I think it's kind of a weird warning because, as far as I can tell, it didn't change anything on the target depth, but whatever. And here's our here's our spiral out, right? It's going to do each one of these passes until it gets all the way uh, out there and it takes care of it. So that's the first part of our uh, of our operation. Now we got to get the uh, the outer outline cut, and we're just going to use a profile to do that. Um, so let's do the profile and let's again use the full depth here All right and let's do the feed rate we had before it's still good for this uh, and a 0.25 tool diameter alright I think that ought to cover all of that and then let's take a look at it get our little warning again and oh yeah here we go so we're going over this way now we need one last uh, one last operation, a third machining operation, to machine the top of this thing, which should be a half an inch high. Now, that's normally called a facing operation, and I, I kind of wish for simplicity we had a facing operation up here, because we don't, uh, and we, you know, it doesn't seem like it's pocketing, and it doesn't seem like it's profiling, but uh, essentially we're going to have to kind of trick it a little bit uh, to get it to do what we need, and so. What I've done is I've selected uh, a profile, right? And this time I'm going to have it profile the inside of the line. Okay. I'm going to have it stop uh, after only going down a quarter, uh, an eighth of an inch, because that's just the material we want to re remove. Five eighths minus an eighth, and we'll be back at the. Uh, We'll be back at the at the half inch thickness that we want for the thing in the first place. Uh, we're going to put the same feeds and speeds. All right. We don't need any holding tabs. We do need a tool diameter. And here we're going to go back into advanced because here's the trick uh, to being able to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to come down here and find. Um, parameter called cut width. What I'm going to tell it to do is cut a lot more than the width of the tool. Um, in fact, I'm going to have it go three quarters of an inch, which I think will take us, you know, all the way in to where the pocket is. All right, and I'm going to set that to a 100% step over again. And then let's just look and see if this looks right to us. We're going to generate the tool paths and we get our little warning again. Oh, see, no tool path because I forgot to tell it a tool diameter. Here again, I really think that ought to be an error that it tells me, but uh, I guess eventually you do get used to it and remember to set it. Let's try again. All right, and so you can see it's going to run the end mill over this thing, uh, and it's it looks pretty good. I think we'll be all right with that in terms of uh, completely facing the top of the thing. All right, so that is all of the uh, G code generated. So I'm now going to go ahead and save that G code out to CamBam uh, Card Spacer, and let's just take a look at it um, using our uh, 
our G Wizard editor. So Cam Bam card spacer. Okay, there it is. And we can see several things going on at several layers. There's the outside, there's the pocketing. This one on top is the you remember I did the trick with the with the profiling to get it to face the top of it. And so you know the program all looks good and if we come over here to info and see how long it takes it's a little bit faster it's about one minute faster than uh, mesh cam because it's it's doing a little bit less and that's really the trade-off on these kind of things is uh, it asked a lot more questions we had to figure out three different machining operations we had to guide it much more precisely whereas mesh cam was a lot more automatic and just figured out a whole bunch more things for us uh, that we didn't have to answer all those questions. Uh, and so, you know, the reason people use more complicated programs uh, is to have more of these options so they can uh, uh, get G code that runs faster. Um, I tell beginners, you know, get one of these things that's simpler. Uh, um, and I'm not, I'm not saying CAMBAM is not simple enough. It's a very popular entry level program, but I'm just saying the simpler the better. Get an inexpensive uh, CAM program, uh, get one that's simple, and you know go from there. Because even though it may not be the last CAM software you ever need, if you start out with something like you know Master CAM or one of the full-on uh, uh, really powerful ones, there's going to be so many options there. It's just going to be bewildering, and you want to you want to get to making parts and get across. Get across that whole learning curve of going from a drawing to parts, you know, as quickly as you can, and then embellish your learning from there with what you really need to do. Uh, so I'm a big believer in getting the simplest possible CAM program to start. All right, thanks very much. That's our uh, CAM BAM demo.